Welcome to Taking Notes with Trainers. A gift from Chili. Ooh. Let's give it Open a it up. I'm <laughs> first. <laughs> it's been a long week. Yes. Now let's uh you see? I was like, how high do you pour? If you over pour, then I'm like, well, you just ruined it. But that was perfect. All right, well, Cheers. here we are. Cheers. Mm. Oh, actually, I've been learning. Oh, did you actually yeah. do some lessons? Yes, I did one. some wine lessons. <laughs> this is the way, if you keep it on the table, for it to not spill everywhere. See? You know? Then you just sniff it. Sniff it. And sip it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Twirl, sniff, sip. <laughs> no, I have to not tap on the table. Mm. Mm. Did you get any workouts in this week at all? I, I got three. Okay. Yeah, I got three workouts in. Nice. Mm -hmm. What'd you do? Weights, two more focused on legs, and then one more focused on arms. That was a little bit shorter. Nice. It was with a client, like my online clients. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just it counted as something. It counted. It counted. It was like, yeah. Minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you? Sometimes, like, yeah, sometimes when I'm teaching, like, a class, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll join in and do some of the stuff with them, especially the flexibility classes. Okay. Um, so it gives me a good stretch. But training-wise, I still, like, had a hard time getting back into my groove. Really? Yeah. I, I feel like I had different things happening in the morning, and by the time afternoon comes, I'm like, nope, that's my time. The afternoon is, like, where I like to do... Oh. Oh my like gosh. my emails and like same the logistics stuff um even like social media work 100 percent. so mornings if i don't get it done and so this the last two weeks just sort of reminded me that it's it's my priorities if like if i've decided that my workouts are like eh, we'll see if it happens that it does not happen, happen. Uh -huh. which isn't usually where my state of mind is but every now and then it sort of shifts because of whatever reason and nobody's perfect all the time no. yeah i find for me like i have to set a time yes because like today i didn't because I, I don't want to get an extra workout in just because i'm so much less active in the winter and mm -hmm. i'm like okay you can get an extra weight training in or do something and then if i don't set the time like i'm like okay you're gonna start at 7 30 or whatever time i choose if i do that and like i pretend like i have an appointment yeah it works and or if i do that like oh i'll do it when i'm done this or i'll do it after i'm drinking my coffee or i'll yeah. just have bread. i'll just chill i'll do it this afternoon it never gets done yeah 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 it can't it so it really can't be and this is something that i've always emphasized mm -hmm. with clients too because i also know it for myself it's like it can't just be i'm getting it done on monday wednesday friday Mm -hmm. That's not enough. You need to be more specific. 100%. It's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for example, 9 a.m. Yeah. Whatever time. There's, there's always going to be other things that can easily take you away from doing the workout. And it's not like it takes that much time. It doesn't sure. have to. I always tell my clients to overbook. Like if mm -hmm. you want to get three workouts in a week, don't aim for three. Aim for four or five. Yeah. And then you'll get three. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. almost how I look at it. Because if you're aiming for three to be 100% mm -hmm. of like hitting your, but if you aim for four and you got a three, like it's a yeah. weird mind game, but well, that's, what, that's what I, that's what I do for myself too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I s sort of would do that same concept where it was like, you have your main essentials mm -hmm. and then bonus. Yeah. I look at it as like bonus workouts. These are the ones that like, if your week is going well and you have the energy for an extra one, then count it as a bonus but I love that yeah, I, do, I do that a sort bit. of like same mm -hmm. idea just slightly different mm -hmm. spin on it <laughs> I like that we said we we're gonna pace drinking this time and you're, right. you're the only one who's doing that <laughs> <laughs> you're like I've been waiting for this I uh have -huh. hey I mean it was a stressful week it was it and was. now it's all good and now we celebrate right. <laughs> now no more stress stress juice recovery juice yes that is the official name that we gave it last week <laughs> yeah yeah so i i look forward to getting back on the right track next week i mm -hmm. think so i did do handstands today and some core a little bit of core work nice core work always makes me feel like ah, okay let's get back we are so fine when i don't do I core don't. i feel like really yeah you feel like what sorry i just i don't feel strong like it's so essential for me to have that strong core because it just we need to do a workout together soon <laughs> 
maybe yep, they're lucky it. enough to film it, but I we should. It, it, they're super fun. You do do a lot of core, which is awesome. Yeah. Well, it was one of the biggest things that my um, osteopath emphasized on for my like my body structure and my injuries. Okay. That like my core really does need to stay strong, and it makes sense mm -hmm. because I had so many issues with my ribs because like my rib cage is small relative to my hip okay and my shoulders okay so it's like this fragile little structure okay. in between so if i don't keep it strong i mean a strong core definitely helps it's just this like sad little pathetic rib cage <laughs> <laughs> it's vulnerable so um i'm one of those trainers that like believes that other things works the core indirectly that like yes oh for sure specific core work is great but i'm just like more bang for your buck with like bigger moves not like i think mm -hmm. definitely you can do, do both well core isn't you're right yeah. core is involved and that's why i do mostly one leg one arm work too. okay so when so i do you consider that a core yeah yeah it's still okay. all core nobody's so like core and abs so today i did like core and abs so okay. working on um stability. compression and stuff and like planks and it's like a whole okay. circuit but you're not doing like crunches and planks no. you're doing like a single leg stability move for your core well all of it okay. yeah so like so people will not would not think yeah it, people are so like focused on core and abs as as being this, just this that my yeah. clients ask me all the time like why are we not doing more abs in the mm -hmm. workout and i'm like because it's it doesn't really provide you with that much so that's the thing when i'm working on even if it is more abs mm -hmm. it's it's specific things to help me with the compression I want for like my eventually being able to press into handstand and stalled or all these like specific um, handstand related things and also for like on the hoop being able to mm -hmm. like lift my legs like the functional portion. so they're specific yeah even if it's ab it's still very specific to what my goals are like to just sit there and crunch Useless. Like there's not useful for anything. Yeah. Like, what are <laughs> back and drink, maybe. <laughs> no, I'm not against crunches. <laughs> no, so it's just that your hard. time is better spent doing other moves. Exactly. So yeah. that's the thing. It's not that it's bad. It's just that if you're gonna prioritize exercises, more bang for your buck. Yeah. And so that's where it's like if I'm doing like single leg deadlifts with like a row and a press, like that's core. It's everything. Core is all of this. Okay. It's not. Okay. It's not this. Yes. It's all yeah, of yeah. this. Yeah. So. So I guess we do have more, like, we do kind of agree on that, I guess. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I guess, so, so when I said I did core at the end of my training, it was more like a core ab. Like, abs. it was core and abs. Like, I, like, because I find if you're doing planks and twisting with it, that's very core. Yeah. Because you're, you're stabilizing on one arm, one leg. Yeah. Like, that's very core heavy, and that's all the stuff. Yeah, I hate ab exercises. But, like, strict, Specific. strict I'll abs. do them. I'll do, yeah. I'll, I'll do a plank. I don't love it. <laughs> I'll do a plank. <laughs> Seriously. Like one mm -hmm. and done. Yeah. And well, the way that I find I get core abs mm -hmm. done is if I do it like in a brief window and make it like a like a circuit, make it like a 10 minute, sometimes it'll be like 10 minutes of going through like five exercises over and over again cool. or, or do... See, I need like a combination. I'll do like a combination exercise, go through it five times take a little rest and then do that again. Mm -hmm. So like core in general abs respond better to endurance anyways. It's yeah, not I like too. you're not you're not going to be like, "Oh, I'm going to put like a bunch of plates on my chest and crunch max weight." Yeah, that's no. not how it works. No, no. It doesn't respond the same as like legs do. Like legs can I agree. do all of it, like the strength, endurance, but core is abs is very endurance. Endurance. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I skip core, I hate abs, mm. but I'm not saying it's bad, it's just one of the things I don't like doing, like, you don't yeah. like doing cardio, I hate yeah. doing abs, abs is mm. painful, like, I'll do one plank, like, I'm not joking, and be done. If that, I rarely, mm. like, this week, no planks were done. No, not <laughs> a plank was seen <laughs> in your gym. <laughs> but, but speaking of core training, I focus a lot on the bum, like, but that's technically core. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Glute stability glute is working your core. Yeah. But when I tell myself it's a glute exercise, I'm more excited over it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, well, and I did a lot of glutes this week. Mm. Glute, glute, glute. <laughs> Gluteus. Yeah. Well, and so when you're working your glutes, you if you're doing them properly, you are doing a lot of, you got to brace your, your core and your 
rib cage, your torso. Thank you. So that you're not arching and like yes. all that stuff. So yeah, I hope my clients are listening to this. Yes. That's why we told you more abs. But I mean, go see Sarah if you want more ab specific <laughs> I mean, I don't spend a bunch of time doing yeah. ab. Yeah, more core. I know what you're saying. Yeah, abs versus core. It, 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 there really is a distinction. Mm -hmm. It's different. Mm -hmm. Abs are literally what ties into your pubic bone and to your rib cage. It literally does this. Yes, yeah. Core is everything. The whole thing. I do need to do endurance work though. I need to figure out a way to get more endurance, especially in the winter. Can't cross country skiing. I can't go biking. Do you cross country skiing? Yeah, well, we have amazing trails. Okay, I'm gonna come oh, see you. In Grand Dig, yeah. Because I'm obsessed with cross country oh, skiing. Oh, we have the best trail. I just bought myself a new pair. love it. Oh, yeah. I'm obs yeah. like weirdly obsessed, like old lady obsessed. Yeah, that's okay. Like I think like kids are obsessed like this with video games. That's me and cross country skiing. Just... <laughs> well, my parents go all the time. They go all winter and they track their mileage and. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Okay, I've never gone. That I haven't much. gone that much. I love it because I still like often I'm focused on my my training, my like handstands and stuff. Okay. But I do want to get more cross country skiing I'm obsessed. this winter. I'm, obs I'm obsessed with and the trails are literally right there. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have to come real soon. Do you have clients that you've had for like a really long time? Yep. Well, since I've only opened like four years ago, since mm. four, like four yeah, years. Yeah, because you moved here, so you were starting really from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. New location. Yeah. I was like, clients. why did I do this to myself? <laughs> but I mean, it's it a paid big, off. It's a big leap. Yeah. To like, take. Why? But it was worth it. Super worth yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And your gym, like your gym is amazing. I was so impressed. Like, oh, thank you. After all the rentals and stuff, it looks, Thanks. I love it. It's it's like perfect. It it's exactly what I wanted. The perfect size mm -hmm. and space mm -hmm. for yourself and the kind of clients that you yeah. want to have. And the yeah. kind of, no, you don't want a big gym with like a whole bunch yeah. of people. Like you it's get not that the atmosphere I wanted. Yeah. You get a personalized experience, even if you have like a small group, it's mm -hmm. still very it's perfect. Personalized. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted, and the people who want to train in that kind of atmosphere, just like you know, mm -hmm. very one on one or four on one, and it's small, yeah. but it's perfect. You know, it's awesome. But yeah, I've had I've had people for many years. I mean, I mean, not everybody stays the whole time, but right. And they are super freaking fit, to be honest. Like when you've been yeah. working out for three years with a trainer, working hard. I mean, they both, one is actually 60 that okay. started with me and she's super strong and amazingly fit and mm -hmm. she doesn't realize how amazing she is. Mm -hmm. And another one's like 30 and on, she keeps me motivated to be strong because <laughs> like she can't be stronger than me. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's exciting when your clients start to make progress that you're like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. like this is motivating me, like re, it re-motivates you to work on those goals and keep like keep things fresh because we don't always tend to work with someone it's true we are we're there to help and guide and we have all the tips and tricks but then we don't always have someone to keep us accountable I agree I haven't had like a real goal like I just mm. I don't have that many goals I just I don't goals that much in the summer I'm like okay maybe I want to get a little bit leaner and then I'm like I want to get a little stronger like pretty much the vague goals that you know you'll never hit yeah what we tell people not to have that's what I have <laughs> you're like, like so the like, troubling client that has no goal exactly that's me so obviously I don't like totally change yeah. anymore but yeah seeing clients progress I, f I, I always find it's patience like it's, yeah. I don't know if it's I find six months within that, it's just convincing them to not stop. And then after six right. months, it's like magical land of unicorns <laughs> <laughs> that you is. don't believe will happen because you've been yeah. doing it for this long and nothing's happened. And you're mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I'm starting to not trust you. And maybe, maybe for some people it's a year, but yeah, maybe for some people it's eight months, 10 months. You know what I mean? It depends on the person. But then afterwards, it's like all these things just start happening. And you're like, see, I told you. <laughs> just you have to believe I wasn't lying. Yes. <laughs> I Stay know consistent. what I'm talking about. Do you know what I mean? Patience is huge, and that's yeah. that's that's I think the biggest Patience. one of the biggest things that for sure when someone's getting started is to understand it's gonna take it will time. take time, and that you just you need to commit to and not and not worry about like seeing results tomorrow. I know because it it doesn't come tomorrow, and that's. 
a challenge, especially in today's world, because everything is so instant. Mm -hmm. Like you can buy everything online instantly. Mm -hmm. Everything you want is available if you just are willing to pay for it. But it's like you you have to put in the work. I know, but I think that when people put the time in, and it's it is a lot of work. It's mm -hmm. a lot of work. But at the when you look back, you're like that was totally doable. But I feel amazing because I pushed hard yeah. and now I'm like so proud of myself like their confidence that they get yeah from just eat. like nobody has a perfect body but you get you know you might lose some fat you might get some muscle you know your body like changes slightly and then all of a sudden you just have a better like, self-confidence body image mm. you know through just yeah I don't know it's like weightlifting for me has helped me accept my flaws and mm -hmm. like the good parts and you know what I mean it's just a positive being active makes you be more positive instead of being like I don't like this yeah I'm like oh well I can do I don't know what you guys do a handstand with splits <laughs> <laughs> I can hold it for like you know I don't know a handstand <laughs> sound like some old prison trying to understand my circus life You're like welcome. that handstand thing cartwheel <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, um, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, just when you can do that, that's what you focus on instead of yeah. before you're active, focusing on like, eh, I feel crappy. Focusing on what you don't like. Yes. Yeah. And and so that's that's the thing. It's like you do have the power to change it. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of making the choice to change. Because if you just sit there and hate your situation, it's not going to make the situation get better. It's true. So. And that's why, like, once they start doing it long enough and they see, they're like, I did this. Mm -hmm. Like, I moved my body and achieved things with mm -hmm. my body. And it's and a pretty powerful. It is. Like, to me, I think it's the best antidepressant, yeah. best, I don't know what else you can call it, life fixer-upper that you can <laughs> yeah. do is be active and mm -hmm. follow whatever. Like, I, I always go to weights, but some sort of yeah. exercise program. Mm -hmm. Well, it gives you something to focus on and it, it will eventually give you some kind of goals. Mm -hmm. Like not everyone comes in with a goal or those goals change. Mm -hmm. Like how many clients have come in with an initial goal and then they like almost like forget about that goal because they feel so good about sure. themselves that they're like, oh, I thought that this mattered, but it actually doesn't matter as much as I thought it did. And they realize they prefer focusing on the movement and feeling good. Like I had... I've had clients where it was like the simple things, like they couldn't like be comfortable going upstairs and mm -hmm. tying their shoes and yeah, like playing with their grandkids, like sure. depending on the person, it's the everyday, it's like how it affects the everyday and like the losing of 20 pounds might be a, an effect like of the training, like a but side it, effect. It's, yeah, but it might not actually be their the thing that focus. Yeah, it's not the thing that they really remember at the end of the day because it's not the mm -hmm. 20 pounds extra that makes them unhappy no it's the not being able to do those things that you just talked about mm -hmm. that might be you know hindering their life yeah so it's like once they focus on focusing once they start focusing on things that are not just so like aesthetic like yeah i don't lose weight i don't look good no you want to be functional you want to be happy yeah that, that's yeah what, that's what you and want so how you feel yeah. and how you feel is a big part which is why we'll tend to look external to make ourselves feel better, mm -hmm. which is why how we look. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, if I had bigger muscles or smaller muscles or bigger butt, smaller mm -hmm. waist, whatever, things mm -hmm. that if we focus on the aesthetic, we think, oh, if I get that, I'll feel better. But that's why you sometimes don't feel better. Like I've, I've had people where it's like, they get the results and they don't believe that the aesthetic has changed because inside hasn't changed yeah so working on your state of mind and your emotions That's and sure. how you're dealing with the realities of life it becomes a whole it becomes a whole system it's like, for sure. so it's important to, to kind of do all of it and i don't know about you but i certainly feel more like a therapist than a trainer half the time <laughs> Which I, I use which I think I, I like that mm -hmm. component because I do want to help people with the whole picture. Yeah. But it's like, it's good that we're focusing on the movement and their physical goals and getting stronger, more flexible, whatever. But to also help them with the, like, the life mm -hmm. portion, because mm -hmm. that's a huge part of their day. It's how they're going to manage stress. If you're managing stress in your sleep, that's also going to help 
getting results mm -hmm. from from what I've noticed with clients. 100%. Because like they can work super hard in the gym, but if they're not focused on the whole picture, it's good. <laughs> they don't focus on the whole picture. Um, they won't get as much results in the sense of really truly feeling like a better version of themselves. I agree. I mean, I train so many women in that. Same. I mean, you have mainly women too. I find that it it's like if they come in and they just more. beat themselves up. They beat themselves up. They beat themselves up. And I'm just like, mm. you know what? Like, even if you lose 20 pounds, you're going to be like, well, I should lose 10 more. Or mm -hmm. I want a small race. And then you're going to get there and you're going to be like, she has a small race. I want a small race. Or you're going to be like, I want a bigger butt. Well, she has a bigger butt. Like, if that is your only focus, it's not, you're not going to be happy at the end of the day because you. There's always going to be somebody skinnier than you, more ripped than you, with a better body <laughs> than you, than a bigger butt than you. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so you just at the end of the day have to accept what you have to like what you're like. Everyone's frame is different, and you need to remember that Absolutely. you're not going to have the same results, even doing the same program as someone else. You know? Yeah. If you if you carry fat in your butt and you don't carry fat in your butt and you're doing the same program, who's going to have a bigger butt? <laughs> person with the fat you know yeah. if you have a tiny waist and, you, and yeah. you're losing weight you're gonna have a smaller waist if you're you know so like yeah. you can't beat yourself up about those little things it's like no. okay get stronger build muscle here maybe these are you know get fit feel good get strong mobile and there's, those other things will happen mm -hmm. but it can't be that it can't be the main main priority and yeah. you just have to learn to love yourself with all your imperfections oh my yeah. gosh because you are made you are who you're supposed to be yeah i feel That's, like yeah it makes me sad when, yeah when there's like this like an inability to accept i used to be that person where i used are. to be that person i would just hate mm. so many different things about my body and then once i just like let it go yeah and then i portrayed like confidence and people are like oh well i like it i like it you <laughs> like well i was the same before yeah so it's just like it's your if you own you attract yeah you're yeah. and you you're like I look good I feel good this is people mm -hmm. are gonna notice and be like you look good yeah because you, you can it, and that's a perfect point where it's like you could look the same you probably looked very similar than you know if you felt like not so great about yourself versus sure. when you felt great it's completely it comes from inside which is why those quick fixes and surgeries I'm sure can be even tougher to, I don't know, like, that's not a thing that I have a lot of experience with, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that psychologically, that that's a hard thing to deal with because you think instantly you get the surgery and you're going to feel like you look exactly what you're hoping to look like. Yeah. You, you do have to work, weird. You, you do have to work on the, on the inside yeah. and not beat yourself up about, all the time. Mm -hmm. I always tell people like, talk to yourself how you would <clears throat> speak to a friend. Like, would, ever be, would I ever be like, oh, well, you should work on, you know, getting more ripped. <laughs> That's yeah. insane. <laughs> well, I would, yeah, you would never say that to a friend. Never. No. So speak to yourself how you'd speak to a friend. And I find that, like, that's what I did for myself, and that's how I changed my mindset, and then, yeah, clients too. Yeah. Yeah, and there's like Cheers a... Cheers to feeling fucking awesome. Feeling fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Bleep. <laughs> You're real small. And so there, um, I find there's like a, there's like a delay of what's actually progressing versus where your mind is. Like, yes. have you noticed that? Yeah. Where it's like, you are progressing, you're getting stronger, you're yes. doing all these things, but there's sometimes a part of you that stays in the old 100%. self. And so working on keeping up with your current state, like I found that that happened to me when I started working with a higher level circus performers. We were training together and I started off, you know, as fairly like beginner. And so as I started to progress and get better, sometimes I still saw myself as this like beginner. Interesting. And that I, I didn't, my brain wasn't caught up with the skills I was actually capable of at that point. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, oh, I okay. can't do that. And okay. then I realized that, oh, actually like I can, okay. I'm doing this okay. now. This is where I'm at. So progress also comes with like that mindset that also needs to catch up with where you actually are. I agree. Or at to like letting go of that old self talk and that old old self. It's, it's no longer a part of you. And what do you think of affirmations? Have you ever done them? No. How do you tell no. people? Like, how do you get people to start thinking differently? It's. <laughs> I focus a lot on meditation. Oh, cool. And and um, 
like there's so many different routes you can take when it comes to meditation and mindfulness. I usually recommend people start with a guided meditation because people be like, I can't meditate. It's like, well, you just try to sit in a room in the dark and quiet and like close your eyes and hope you stop thinking. <laughs> That's Guilty. not actually how not gonna you happen. get anywhere because it's not meditating. Is it just like stopping your thoughts? Mm -hmm. you, you can't just like shut it off. It's, it's a process and just like training. It, it takes time and mm -hmm. patience. Like you so, can't start with the heavy weights right away. You have to get it with body weight first. Exactly. You have to build a foundation. Mm -hmm. And so you got to start with the baby steps. Okay. And so it's the same with meditation. You, you find like even finding the right guided meditation with the, the voice. Cause I certain voices, certain voices like hundred percent doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Accents like don't work for me. <laughs> I, I like the British accent. I find like the British take a sight. Okay. <laughs> Are you trying to work your eyes? <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to see if I could do it. I'm trying to picture a guided meditation in like a British mm. yeah, doctor kind of house. There's like a there's like a calm. I mean, it depends on the voice. Okay, but so I like I explored. So myself, I explored a bunch of different apps and found a voice that I liked. And I honestly, I still listen to it. It's been like ten years that I used yeah. the same one. Uh, I think it's like Sleep Easily. Sleep. Do you have to pay for it? Not the one that I use, I don't think. Sleep I think easily. It's like, yeah. By Shazzy. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. Sleep easily. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one that I would use for like nighttime. Um, and so eventually I started doing meditation with more of a like a frequency sound. Or like oh, it's like some sounds and then I, okay. I can just do my own, but I didn't start That's that amazing. Way at all. Like so for me I started getting into meditation for my sleep. Because I was a thinker at night, I'd okay. like try to like lay down. I'm like, mm. okay. <laughs> thoughts are brewing. Um, so I wanted to stop being the person that said I'm just a bad sleeper, and actually do something about it. Good for you. And so that's one of the things that I focus on with my clients too. Cool. Is and to make do sure they that they're focusing on their sleep because not everyone yes. sleeps well and. If you're not everything. sleeping well, it's going to affect your work, it's yes. going to affect your ability to want to work out, your yes. hormone balance, what your you're nutrition, what you want to eat your food. Mm. Yeah. When I don't sleep, I'm like, I don't care about anything. Yeah. Yeah. Give me those chips, yeah. give me those take out. Foods. Oh yeah. yeah, I just don't care. Yeah. So I'm like, those people that never sleep, no wonder they're not eating anything healthy. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to work out when I can't sleep. No. It's, there's, no, and that's why like, as I got older, I realized that when I thought I had hangovers, it was actually tired. a lack of sleep because you're combining having some drinks with also going to bed late and then and you, you don't, don't sleep, sleep well mm -hmm. if you do have a certain amount of alcohol. Yeah. So once I realized that, oh, that's not really it. Is that what a hangover is? I don't know, but like being tired is almost like lack a of sleep was actually what was making me not feel well and yep. made me crave those fast foods. Yeah. And, I mean, when I was in university, I didn't want to miss a workout. So even if I had a night out, I would go to the gym the next morning, even though I felt yeah. Happy. I think I used to have more than two, but now I'm never. I, I think that's why I try to get now. all my workouts in during the week because Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sometimes I do work out on weekends, but mm -hmm. most of the time I don't. Most of the Same. time I try. I just Too want weak. it to be off. Yeah, and then that's when I might have extra wine. And then if I don't sleep good, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Like I just can wait. And then that's when I have more treat foods anyway, so it just kind of naturally happens. But yeah. I don't live my life every day like that, you know. And that's also what's nice, what we were talking about earlier about having the like bonus day or making your, your program in a way that there's like leeway. Mm -hmm. That's what's nice. If you also don't necessarily, say your workout program has four or five days a week, you didn't get them all in in the week, but you happen to feel good on a Saturday, Yeah. then you can like squeeze it in on the weekend. Mm -hmm. So that's where I find like it's nice not having my training program be in the weekend, but then if I have to, and if mm -hmm. I feel like, oh, I, I missed a workout and I, I feel up for it mm -hmm. by Saturday, then I'll do it. And if not Saturday, Saturday is like a floater day for me because I teach because I teach on a Saturday okay. and my mind yeah. is still like a work day. Yeah. So, I mean, in summer, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I worked out Friday, Saturday, Sunday for, you know, June or maybe <laughs> June, July, August. Well, you went to the cottage. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you were like, <laughs> bye, <July." laughs> so nice though. It's a nice spot. It's nice, but it's it's also nice to just be home again. Mm. Yeah, because it does make you feel a little bit on the go all the time. Which, all the time. which packing bags going, getting there, Hard. unpacking, 
Yeah, come back, unpacking. Like it was a lot. It's, it's amazing, and I feel like super lucky that we can do that. Right. But um, but then Monday comes and you're like, oh, I don't yeah. feel like I like you. You didn't recharge. It's like you recharge but didn't. Yes. It's like that feeling of needing a vacation from your vacation. Yeah. Mondays. Like, Mondays are always. You need hard. a few days to be at home to recharge at home. Yeah, but home in the summer, recharge. I don't want to be home. I want to be outside. Yeah. So yeah, I, I it was it was on it was oh, the okay. summer. You'll come visit me at my I'll house, visit. and you'll come, and I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be accessible. <laughs> I will be stranded on the beach. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> like I'm I don't think you else. might be a car. <laughs> How the hell am I supposed to get You there? know what? I work hard, I work out hard, and I drink hard, and I party hard. Hey, it was, your, hard. it was your birthday. Yeah. So, it was fine. I I, I enjoyed getting to at least see where it is. Next time I'll get to like interact with you <laughs> when I'm there. It's, it's a fun spot. Yeah, it's nice. So, but yeah, you, you'll have to come see my neck of the woods too. But you'll come this winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll actually go in the woods. I'm excited. To ski. I'm excited. I Probably love the seasons. Ski. Seasons are nice. Yeah. Like I don't understand the people who just hate them. And I'm just, I just, I'm like, enjoy the change. I think the one thing I would, if I could change a little bit, mm -hmm. is the length of our winter. A thousand percent. Winter here is just a little longer yeah. than mm -hmm. I would prefer because wow. my birthday in April is always like hit or miss. Sometimes April it's like nice, mm -hmm. and some years it's gross, rainy, cold. We could cut out February, March, and that would be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's why like pre-pandemic I got to go to Mexico for six, well, five weeks and then okay. to Florida for a week. It yeah, was I remember that. January, February. Perfect. So by the time I got back and it was March, I was ready to get back to work and then of course everything <laughs> locked down. But it was it was not so bad because the weather was already starting to get nicer by the time. <laughs> yeah. By the time the first few it's weeks long. of lockdown happened and I was like, oh I need to actually go outside because it's long. Uh and yeah. I think the only way to get through it is to get outside and try to find something you like. And it's all about mindset. Mm -hmm. I used to mindset. consider myself like a seasonal depression type of person. Oh. Like that. Like but that's like you're choosing to be a victim of your circumstances that you can. Kind change. of. But it kind of. I, I definitely yeah. still feel low energy on rainy days. 100%. I still yeah. feel that. And Same. you gotta kind of let it go. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's not gonna be your best walk, but I still mm -hmm. go out on a rainy day. Yeah. And then I feel so much better. You know, I still go for a walk on a rainy day. And sometimes rain is actually kind of like this nice Super change of energy. Yeah. Like you'll go out, when you go out in the rain and choose to just embrace it. And, yes. And not, because if you're trying to like not get wet, then it's like, oh, this rain is yeah. so annoying. But then once you just accept that you'll get some droplets and it's have amazing. an umbrella. Changing, yeah. you're just you're in it, and it's like, oh, this rain is actually kind of peaceful. It's nice. It changes the pace. Because if you're always, I've had people. It's all about mindset. That talk to me. Yeah, it's all about mindset. Yeah. That affects everything. I don't want to get wet. To oh my gosh, this is magical. Yeah. And like, who's gonna have more fun going outside? <laughs> yeah. Being like ah. Or, <laughs> Because you can just say nobody else is outside because everybody's inside yeah. and I'm like wow this is amazing so I live in the city and I can go outside and nobody's out and it feels amazing mm -hmm. I guess you get that all the time but it's I'm like stay inside it's I think fun. part of the seasons is also it helps us work like be better at adapting okay because I've had people talk about living in California and how you think oh it'd be so nice to live in California because it's just sunny and warm all the time but they're like you almost get uh, immune to that beauty because it's your everyday scenery. True. So, so we can, for us, it's yeah. like, you know, we have the change in weather and sometimes it feels hard because it's always changing. Mm -hmm. always <laughs> but changing. then it keeps us, we I take advantage of the sunny days. Yeah, when we get the sun, that's why we in the summer we get it. so much. We get so like yeah. off our schedule in the summer because we're like, okay, it's here for we a short do. time. Yes. Let's do this. Or how can we work? Go Cancel to the everything. Beach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I definitely work less in the summer. Me too. And it's it's perfect because I love summer and we're clients lucky. are less likely to want to train hard in the summer. Oh, too. people just are like, I'm so not like, let's, in like, let's like maintain. <laughs> yeah. Use summer as maintenance mode because everyone has cottages and you can work out outside. They'll take vacations Spend with more the time kids. outside. Work out outside. Go walk outside. Yeah. So I enjoy I enjoy that our uh, slow season is my favorite yeah. time for it to be slow. Christmas and summer. It's true. <laughs> Right. I've never worked around Christmas. Cheers! Yeah! <laughs> Trainer, <laughs> great line of work. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so I've never really worked around Christmas, and I always work less in the summer. Mm -hmm. 
And then also, I wouldn't up. even book vacation in, in at Christmas because people just wouldn't come. I'm like, perfect. I have to times. I have time off, mm -hmm. and then I can go see my family. So yeah. I would just wait. So. And then in the summer, they're like, I'm not coming. And at first, I'm like, oh, and then, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, bye. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to go enjoy this beach day because yeah. it's another beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like having more flexibility in the summer to enjoy the beach mm -hmm. and the sun. And like training outside, I definitely train outside more in yeah. the summer. So it's, it's, I like running when it's warm out. Mm. I don't run much, but you run in the winter? Never. No, never. You're not that dedicated. <laughs> nope. It's something about the sun being out and the heat yeah. and just like, I'm like, yes, you yeah. have all this extra energy it in definitely. the summer. And I used to feel so guilty because I don't have the extra energy in the fall, winter, and sp well, spring it starts to come, but I'm yeah. just like, I'm like, where's that summer energy? Cause I'm like, legit, I'm like on drugs and stuff. Yeah. I can't stop. It's, it's on another level. Yeah. You have to work harder for it in the winter because the days are also shorter. I'm not this. So you have to like boost up your actual vitamin D. That's yeah. like, that's one thing I yeah. do take. I don't take I a do lot of supplements, but vitamin D is like the main one. That, Same. And my uh, naturopath is actually like, pretty much everyone in New Brunswick should like need to I take like a. this much. <laughs> Get it up, load up the vitamin D. <laughs> but I just like I've learned to accept that I'm gonna slow down in the winter. Yeah, and I'm gonna do less in the fall, yeah. and it's fine. Work with the seasons, yeah. and that's a good analogy for a lot of things in life. It's mm -hmm. like work with the realities. You can't wait for things to change for you to make a change. Mm -hmm. and that's a common thing I've heard from people wanting. They like want to start training or working with with me. And but they're like, okay, once once my kids are back in school, I'll be good. Oh, once the kids are out of school, I'll be good. Mm -hmm. Once this project is done at work, there's always going to be a project. There's always going to be some life thing. So it's, it's like never going to be easy. It's never waiting mm -hmm. for the perfect moment. Mm -hmm. It's like there's always going to be changes. Things are always like the pandemic taught us that nothing is predictable and nothing sure. is guaranteed. There's always there's always going to be something thrown our way. So continuously working with the changes. You like take sure. a moment to observe, oh, this is hard, this is stressful, whatever situation is going on. And be realistic with what you can but then do in those make times. a change, mm -hmm. like, take action. Once you've absorbed the emotions about it and the challenges, then you like move forward. Because sure. if you stay in that state, mm -hmm. you're you're not gonna you're not gonna get anywhere. Yeah. That, so. Yeah. People need to go roll with people it. People don't understand how much power they have in their mental state. If you tell yourself you can't, you can't, or this or that, or this is stopping me from doing that or that or that, then it will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you it believe is, will. Is, is true. Yeah. If you're like, I can't do it, well, then you're not going to do it. If you're like, I can do this and I will make the time for this, then you're going to yeah. do it. Like, mindset is crazy. And if you only mm -hmm. work out or, or be, yeah, if you're only active when you feel good, then that's n you're never gonna achieve your goals like i feel amazing june july august but does that mean i don't work out the rest of the year no i still yeah. do it october into a lot of november i was doing bare minimum two way yeah. trainings a week yeah i just listen to my body and i accept the weeks that i i just can't mm -hmm. do as much I, I set the goals realistically and, and you can't be in a push phase all the time like yeah. i feel like you'll have months of motivation push all those months and when it's a little bit down don't stop right but Re like reassess what you can do and stick with it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the months of maybe achieving great things, but you won't take any steps back. You exactly. Know? You can still maintain, mm -hmm. and you're still you're still like doing something. It's just they're not always always progressing. Mm -hmm. You're going to be going through the ups and downs. Everybody does. And yeah, there are weeks that are harder than others, months that are harder than others. It's just like figure out what you can do to at least stay in the rhythm a little bit yes because so, if you lose it completely then it's just harder to get back it's true so finding something that can be your your bare minimum true and that you have you have sort of a range so mm -hmm. you have your minimum that you want to make sure okay at least get two days a week mm -hmm. so then when you're feeling it's like you were saying when you're feeling better you'll get more mm -hmm. you'll do more sessions you're like yeah i've got the energy then if there's another week or another month that it's not there you just Okay, I'll go to my bare minimum for a few weeks while I'm coping and dealing with this because life does happen yeah. and there are so many things that, you know, take it, you away from 
Yeah, and have like a fallback plan. Like when I'm yeah. feeling really low energy and I'm not feeling my weights, then I might be walking a little extra. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, it's not giving me the strength, but I'm not like just laying there. Right, you're staying active. I'm walking maybe maybe more than than normal, which maybe normal is 45 minutes most days. And maybe I'm walking 90 minutes because I just mm -hmm. don't feel like doing weights. Yeah. You know, like you can always find something that doesn't sound horrible to do and <laughs> yeah. do that. Yeah, or you might just really need some time to do nothing, and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Those are sometimes my favorite days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I've definitely taken those. I mean, I guess I wasn't doing nothing; I was focusing on other things. But like the last couple of weeks, it's been, you know, I'm obviously active because I teach. Mm -hmm. That that already keeps us moving too. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that we teach people and we move and like just teaching warm ups multiple times a day mm -hmm. is like. A lot. Well, I'm like you guys already know the warm up. Go. <laughs> I don't warm up with anyone. It depends on the class. That's if I have like regulars, mm -hmm. then sometimes I'll just verbally like cue them through the word. I'm like, warm -up. follow her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I totally have time. I'm like, okay, I really don't want to. I like this is my rest day. I'd rather not. <laughs> well, like you, you guys are here to do the work for you. So, so yeah, it's everything will constantly be changing but mm -hmm. it's finding a way to have something stable throughout those changes yeah and that's a thing we do for ourselves and a thing we do for our clients and our students where it's like we're there to help them go through that challenging time and it helps them stay accountable and if you don't have a trainer work finding a program finding a structure finding something that mm -hmm. will will help hold you accountable mm -hmm. yeah. you can do it <laughs> You can do it. Sorry, Nike. <laughs> <laughs> that was lot, awesome. That was a lot awesome of chat to talk about. Yes. I hope you took some notes. I hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> the video. Took lots of notes. Yeah. As we were tasting these notes. Yeah. They're great notes. Mm -hmm. I really like this one. That was yummy. It'll, Chili. It'll go on the list. Carbonier. Um, Thanks awesome. so much for tuning in. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.